Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, bless your holy name. Hallelujah, welcome back into the sanctuary. Hallelujah, of our Father and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are so glad to have you back here today. Amen. Those members of this house. Amen. The Spoken Word Church and those of you who have joined us this morning. We are so thankful and grateful. Amen. If you would this morning, I just want to everybody to stand and and those of you at home, if you could stand this morning. I just want to reverence our God. This morning, we just want to give him praise. Amen. As we open up the service this morning, those of you who can pray in your heavenly language, I'm going to ask this morning that you would do that with me. And if I could, if you would give me some background music and just just begin to worship the Lord this morning. Let's just welcome his presence into this house. Amen. Let's Please, our Father, on purpose this morning. How many of you know that the flesh never really wants to worship God? Amen. But this morning, we're going to take authority. Amen. Over our flesh. We're going to take authority over our bodies this morning. We're going to take authority over our minds this morning. Amen. And we're going to pray in the Holy Spirit. Because what we understand is when we pray in our heavenly language, we not only build ourselves up, amen, but we also pray for those things that we know not to pray for, amen. So let's just begin, if you would, and let's just begin to worship our Father this morning. Hallelujah. I shall not amassu umbram baba corrende besete yeko. Meliamba sutu rende beke ye. Shamba rende bo soto. Jenelamba soko ramba baba baka ye de bo sata. Iandorende ambro bobo shakandro lobo soto. Iandro lobo sakam baba rende bebeke ye. O maramba baba sata. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you this morning. God, we praise you. Father, we lift up your holy name, God. Father, we bow before you, God. God, we focus, God. We focus our attention on you this morning because you are Lord over our lives Lord we welcome you in the sanctuary we say Holy Spirit have your way this day in the name of Jesus Father Lord, we thank you, Father, for your signs, O oh God. We thank you for your wonders, O oh Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your help, Father, because we know that the help, Father, our help, Father, comes from you in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we give you all of the praises. Father, bless this service, O oh God. Bless services all over the world, God. We thank you, Father, for the lost coming, Father, to the house of God to be saved in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the lost, Father, that wherever they are, Father, that they can be saved, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for bringing back every backslider today. We say glory be unto you, Father. We thank you, Father. Because we know, Father, that one day every knee, God, God, every tongue, Father God, will confess that you are God. And we thank you today, Father. Hallelujah, that we seek you while it is today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We say bless every person, God, that's standing before 
before you today, God, in the name of Jesus, God, in honor of who you are, God. King of kings and Lord of lords, Father God. Hallelujah, the author and the finisher, God, of our faith today, God. The one who began a good work, Father, in us, oh God. The one who shall be completed today, Father. The one who order our steps in the name of Jesus. The one who makes provision today, God. The one, Father, who lets us know how much he reminds us how much he loves us. The one who cares for us. The the one who heals us, the one who delivers us, hallelujah, the one who sets the captives free on today, Father, the one who awakes us, the one who breathes life in us today, the one who cares, Father, for all, Father God, all that we do, Father. We thank you, Father. We admonish you, Father. And God, we think it not strange, oh God, because we get to live we get to move and we get to have our being father only because of your grace oh god only because of your mercy father in the name of jesus and god we thank you father god that your mercy god and your grace oh god follow us oh father in the name of jesus we bless you god now, Father, I lift up leaders all over the world, God. God, I declare that those do not know you, Father. That you, Father, will send, Father, a messenger. Send someone, Father, to plant a seed, oh God. Send someone, God, to water a seed. And God, we know that it's your Holy Spirit, God, that will bring the increase in their lives today. We thank you for it, God. And Lord, we thank you for it. Men and women of God all over the world. We thank you today, God, that they are coming, Father, before people, Father, to speak, Father, your words only, Father. And we know, Father, that it's your word, God, that has power to change, Father, in the name of Jesus. Power to increase, oh, Father. Power to take a people, Father, God, from here to there, Father, in the name of Jesus. A power, Father, to cause a people to do better, Father. A power, Father, to cause us to come, Father, out of darkness, Father, into the light, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you today, God, because we are holy, God, because we have been perfected, Father, only because of you, Father, we can see ourselves as a finished work, Father, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you the honor. And we say bless this service on today. And bless your people. Bless them, O oh Father. In the name of Jesus, let us all say amen. And amen. Let's give God a hand praise because he is faithful. He is faithful. And if you would remain standing with me as we say our Psalms 91, our canopy protection together in the name of Jesus. Let us read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my God, and him shall I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the northern pentless. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the peasant that walk in darkness, nor for the the destruction that wafe at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thy trample under feet. 
Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen to God be the glory. And now for our announcements. Good morning and welcome to Spoken Word Church, where it's all about Jesus. Here are today's announcements. Men of Covenant meetings continue to go forth every third Saturday of the month from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. This is a wonderful time to seek, find, and develop together. Congratulations, Sonship School of the Firstborn 2022 graduates. Our Sonship graduation ceremony will be held on Sunday, July 24th at 3 p.m. here at Spoken Word Church. Family and friends are welcome to attend. Celebratory details will soon be posted. Join us as we lift up the world in prayer. Our online intercessory prayer is the first and fourth Saturday of the month from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We are better together. Get ready, get ready, get ready for our Women Empowering Women Ministry Launch. Ladies, get connected and prepare to be uplifted, encouraged, and prosper in the principles of God. Details coming soon. Our Wednesday night Bible study is every Wednesday from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Join us as we zoom into the Word of God. Mark your calendars for our annual church cleanup. Sanctuary doors will be open Friday, June 17th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. for those who are available to assist. Leftover cleanup will also be held on Saturday, June 18th at 11 a.m. We thank you in advance for laboring in the love and upkeep of the Lord's house. We are free because of the brave. This Memorial Day, let us remember and honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. As a friendly reminder, please remember to silence your cell phone, minimize movement, and stand clear of the camera's view during service. Thank you for joining us today. We are blessed to have you. This concludes today's announcements. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Amen. Praise his holy name. I pray that um, our viewers today online, are they able to hear our announcements? Amen. I'm so thankful and grateful for that. We encourage you, amen, to be a part, amen, of everything that, you know, the Lord has to offer us. So those of you, we ask that you will join us on Wednesday night Bible studies. Amen. We, we say we're zooming in the word. Amen. And it's such an honor, you know, for us to go and grow in the Lord. Amen. So as we seek the face of God, we know that God will promise us to live a life and to live that life more abundantly because that's what God promises us. Amen. So I encourage each and every one of you, amen, to come and Zoom in the Word with us on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m., amen, to 8 p.m. And also reiterating the men's men's covenant, amen, with, the, with our beloved pastor, Amen. Pastor Daryl Simmons here. He has a heart. Amen. For the men of God. And we're asking that you will come out every third Saturday. Amen. To be a part of the men's covenant. I believe that when men come together, amen, Pastor, he says it well, that we can pretty much we can stand the world up right Amen. Our families. Amen. We can serve in our community. I look at it like this. Um, men helping men to be strong. And we know that when we're strong in Christ, God, he energizes us. Amen. He encourages us. Amen. To go forth and make a difference in this world. 
Amen. So I just want to say, God bless you all. And again, join us here at the Spoken Word Church. Amen. So now I would like to take a moment out to give our ushers the opportunity. Amen. What time is it? Oh, man. Come on. Come on. Let's hear it. Tithes and offering time. Amen. Amen. This is the time in which we will give honor unto our Lord on what he has asked us to do. And one thing I know here at the Spoken Word Church is that we teach tithing. The reason why we give tithes, amen, is simply because God said it. And because he said it, amen, we trust him. So it's so be it. Amen. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So us just, if you would, amen, I'm asking those of you who need a tithe and offering envelope, just go ahead and raise your right hand. Amen. That way we can receive and my man of God can give us, amen, our tithe and offering for this morning. Amen. That we are blessed in the name of Jesus. His holy name. I want to clap a little loud. Praise his holy name. Amen. If you would stand, everyone, if you would extend your hands to the offering bucket and let us be in agreement. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for these tithes, God, and we thank you for these offerings, Father. Father, we ask that you, Father, will open up the windows of heaven. You have promised this to us, Father, and that you will pour, Father, your people, those, Father, who have given unto you, Father, their offerings and their tithes, Father, that you will pour them out blessings, Father, that they cannot receive in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that by way of giving, we know that it's the way in which you, Father, have made, Father, provision in our lives. So, God, we thank you even for increase, so, Father, we thank you that provision is made. Because, Father, we have been obedient to your word. We thank you, Father, that everything in this ministry, Father, is met, Father, because of the faithfulness of the people, Father. And, God, we lack nothing, Father God, and we owe nothing, Father, to no man today. So we can declare that all of our property, Father, is paid off in full and that truly, God, we are 100% tithes and givers. And I thank you, Father God, that monies, oh Father, provision, Father, is coming from the north, God, is coming from the south, is coming from the east, God, and is coming from the west, Father. And I know, Father God, that you don't need our help, Father. So I thank you, Father, that we won't have room to boast, Father, but we can only boast on you and give you all of the glory because of what you have done, Father. And let that be our testimony here, Father, in the spoken word church. It's in your son Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen to God be all of the glory. And before we're seated, amen, let us confess our confession of faith this morning. Amen. Let us read. People are standing in line to get into this church, this church in this location to hear the word of God. Every seat is filled in every service with expectations of signs, wonders and miracles. Our Sunday morning service at 11 a.m., our Wednesday night service at 7 p.m., our intercessory prayer service every first and fourth Saturday at 9 a.m., and any other service that we might have. Every need in this ministry is met, and we are 100% tithe givers. All of our property is paid off in full, and we owe nothing to no man. Every member in this church is healed, healthy, blessed, and prosperous. And we are reaching the world with the gospel through our prayers and support. For this is a prosperous year for us. The doors of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed and we shall not know defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us and the doors of success has been opened and we shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed and we shall not know defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us and the doors of success has been opened. 
We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed and we shall not know defeat. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was able also to perform in Jesus name. Amen and amen. And before we have our seat, let us welcome our man of God, Pastor Daryl Simmons. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, First Lady. Amen. Thank you. I'm snacking this morning. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to use the handheld mic this morning. Thank you, Brother Joy. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our life changing King this morning. Amen. To God be the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to invite the Lord's presence in this place. We want to invite him into our life this morning. Amen. And God bless the, the young, young youth that are here this morning to hear the word of God. And may God speak to you and that may you be a, a light, an epistle. An epistle is a written letter of your life, how you live and how you approach life and how you um, show people that you do follow not just the principles but the process of god's kingdom amen i pray for all men and women all over the world this morning amen that you be filled with the spirit and the love and the joy of god in the name of jesus and i pray for us here in this particular place this morning that we continue to have the strength of the lord jesus christ in our life this morning amen hallelujah now gracious father we come to you in the mighty name of your son jesus christ we come asking you for your infinite wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding God that you may launch us into the deep into the deepness of your heart and in your mind that you may catapult us God where we can't take ourselves and Lord I thank you for your love of your son who died on the cross and shed his blood for all and God as we get into this word this morning let the word be written and engrafted upon our heart, for we are ready writers and scribes that you perfect us, God, in the beloved of your son, Jesus Christ. And to all of those that are looking online, God, we ask, God, that they will stand up, reach up, and they will advance themselves into the temple, into the kingdom of God. And God, we are pleased that you love us so much. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory this morning, amen. So we've been in a teaching series, and I'm going to get right into the word of God this morning. We've been in a teaching series, the 3D kingdom. And when we talked about the 3D kingdom, we talked about we look up. And when we look up in the kingdom, we came from Matthew chapter 6. And chapter 6, we was in the 25 to, 20 to 35. Four verse that was the foundational text of that particular um, area that we was dealing with and we said the 3d kingdom is threefold process amen and not just the process but it has principles in the 3d kingdom we said we reach up because we look unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith amen and also it says looking unto Jesus not just that but he says when we look to Jesus Jesus will give us everything that we desire if we put the kingdom first amen the kingdom has to go first it's not our life. It's not what we believe. It's not what we receive, but it's the kingdom of God. Amen. And then we said that we reach in. We reach into the heart of God. When we reach into the heart of God, we understand the will of God, the way of God, and the principles and the process of God. We talked last week that many people understand principles which are good, but the processes we have difficulty we have processes, we have difficulty because processes stretch us, process prove us, processes make sure that we're under, that we're walking in the principles that for that which we do understand. Do you hear that this morning? And then thirdly, we said to reach out. Once we reach up, knowing that we look to Jesus and that he is the author and finisher of our faith, we reach into the word of God, knowing the will, the way and the process of God. And then we reach out. We reach out. What do we reach out? We reach out to others that they may look up, that they may reach in, that they may reach out in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. You know, it's a phenomenal thing um, when we look in Scripture, when we look in Scripture and as um, First Elaine and I, we do our um, 
Bible study. We're in the book of Numbers. And it's so phenomenal that when you can see things in Scripture and then it reflects the true life. Many believe that the Bible was written 2,000 years ago, that it does those things pertain to back then. No, it pertains to the same thing today. And as we was on our intercessory prayer on yesterday, God brought it to the remembrance of how people take things and they put it in their own perspective. And when you put things in your own perspective, you are saying God is not good. God is not able. God is not faithful. And God cannot do anything for me in the name of Jesus. Do you hear that? And many people hold on to things that they try to get accomplished in themselves. You know, we hold on to people and try to process them ourselves, thinking that we can make them better. Amen. That we can heal them. We don't have the power to heal. Amen. We have the knowledge and understanding of the one that can heal them. And we must lead them to that person that can heal them. And that person is Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Spirit's anointing. And so Jesus is telling us here in this 3D kingdom that we must understand kingdom principles, kingdom processes. Many people don't want to understand that Jesus has a command on their life. And I said on last week, many people don't like no one telling them what to do. Amen. If the word of God can infuse you and inspire you to do what it says to do, who in the living, tangible realm of this earth going to get you to do it. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? You must trust the word of God and the word of God has all rule, all power and all authority for us to trust the word of God. So living in the kingdom of God, it has commandments in living in the kingdom of God, not only principles, but there are many processes that you must go through to understand this thing in the kingdom of God. Somebody listening this morning, are you listening this morning? Amen. Can you heed to what God is saying this morning? It's not just we go through principles, but we must go through processes to understand if the principles truly what we believe. Amen. Glory to God, because we can say a lot of things out of our mouth. But where is your heart? Your heart shows the process. Do you hear what I'm saying? The principles you can get. Oh, I understand. Oh, I heard that. But where is the process? Do your heart believe? And when your heart believes, then you can receive. And when you receive, you believe and then you go and do. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody say go and do. See, this is the part that we must understand to go and to do. Go and to do. Go and to do what? Compel them to come. Compel them not to come to like you. Not compel them to come to be your friend, but compel them to come to know the one that loves them and compel them to come to know the one that will never leave them or forsake them, which is Jesus Christ. Do you hear that? That is the process that we must take people through. And if we understand those principles, then we will want to compel them to come. And the compelling them to come is the process of what we truly believe and stand on the principles of God. Do you hear that? Glory to God. The deep is calling upon the deep this morning. Amen. He says, launch out to the deep. Why am I launching out to the deep? Because on the shallow waters, you can't catch anything. Or when you launch out to the deep, there's a lot of things in the deep. But sometimes when you cast your nets, fishermen cast their nets in the deep. I'm dealing with the kingdom here, but it's a natural process. Fishermen launch out to the deep and they cast their nets. When they cast their nets, what are they looking for? They're looking for a catch. But everything in the net, when they pull the net up, is not exactly what they cast them out to get. Do you hear that? So when they pull the nets up, sometimes they have to go through what the net is holding. Do you hear that? Glory to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not all what they cast their nets out to do. What do they cast their nets out to do? Some fishermen cast their nets out to catch shrimp. Some cast their nets out to get oysters. Some cast their nets out to get salmon, catfish, all the different type of fish that's in the sea. But when they pull the net back in, everything that they cast it out, believing and trusting that's going to get into the net is not actually in the net. Do you hear that? So you have to go through the net, amen, go through the net, and then you have to look and see what is in your net. Do you hear that? Because everything in the net is not good. Do you hear that? 
Everything in the net is not good. I know I'm messing with your theology because you said, you say, Brother Simbagasa, everything is good. Yes, everything is good if it's pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. If it's pleasing unto the Lord, everything is good. So here we are this morning and we're going to be dealing with um, Jesus. OK, in the book of John's gospel, in the book of God, John's gospel, I want us to write these things down. It's all coming from the book of John's gospel. In the book of John's gospel, we're not going to turn to that particular text, but I want to un I want us to understand that in the kingdom of God, God is the father. Do you understand that in the kingdom of in the kingdom, we have a father and in the kingdom, we have a son, the father and the son. But all in that kingdom, too, is the Holy Ghost. Do you hear that? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. So in this thing, we must understand that the kingdom of God has a process and the kingdom of God has principles. When we see storms in our life, when we see things happen in our life, we cling on to what the principles of God, but we hold on what to the processes of God, because when the storms come, the process holds us stable. Do you hear that? Do you understand the process will hold you stable because you understood the principles? What is the principle of the word? Jesus Christ will never leave you nor forsake you. He never seen the righteous forsaken or begging bread that he is the peace in the middle of the storm. That is the principle. The process is how are you going to stand when the storm comes? Do you hear that? How are you going to stand when the storms comes? When the storms comes, it's going to come raging in the mighty name of Jesus. All right. You don't believe me. Let's go on to the book of Mark's gospel. Mark's gospel, uh, chapter 14. It seemed like you're looking at me like, I don't understand. I don't believe this in scripture. Amen. The ultimate reason. Amen. Jesus is going to tell us some things here. He's going to let us know who he is and what he's able to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at Mark's gospel this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus is our high priest. Amen. He's our high priest. Mark's gospel, the 14th chapter this morning. Glory to God. Jesus is our high priest. And I pray continuously for those that really don't understand that the kingdom of God has a command. The kingdom of God is not about your suggestions, your opinions, or how you feel in the mighty name of Jesus. It's about the commandment of God. It's about the commandment of Jesus Christ. It's about the commandment of the high priests in the mighty name of Jesus. So in the book of Mark's gospel, let's gaze our eyes here in the mighty name of Jesus. And let's look here in the 60th verse the 60th verse in the 60th verse glory to god in the 60th verse we're talking about the high priest we're talking about the kingdom of god and it goes here and the high priest stood up in the midst and asked jesus saying answer thou nothing what is it which these witness against thee but he held his peace do you see that he held his what peace so he understood principles, but he's now shown the process of holding your peace. Sometimes we can read the word of God, including myself. I'm always included. I'm never excluded. I read the word of God. You read the word of God. And the God tells us that peace in the midst of the storm. But see, when the storm come, can you hold your peace? Do you hear this? When things are not right, can you hold your peace? When somebody is ostracizing you or somebody trying to belittle you or someone is trying to talk about you or someone is not doing the commandments of God, can you hold your peace? Do you see that? Glory to God. And Jesus is showing us not just a principle. He's showing us the process. And it goes on again right here in 61. But. He held his peace and answered what nothing. When you hold your peace, you don't have to retaliate. 
You don't have to open up your mouth. You don't have to say anything because now you're going and showing the process that I can hold my peace. Whatever you say, whatever you think, however you talk about me, I'm holding my peace. Do you hear that? Glory to God. They talked about Jesus. They they ridiculed Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. You've been ridiculed. You've been talking about. But can you hold your peace? Holding the peace, showing the processes that you truly understand the principles of God. Do you hear that? He says, my my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, for they are higher than yours. And then he also comes to us and said that that um, the battle is not ours. It is of the Lord's. The battle is not yours. The battle is not mine. It is of the Lord's. Do you see that? And he also tells us in the latter days, some will fall away from the faith. Do you see that when they fall away? Do you get upset? Do you get bent out of shape or can you hold your peace? Do you hear that? The process is holding your peace. The principle is understanding what he already told us in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you hear it? Glory to God. Somebody ought to get happy on this because I am. In the mighty name of Jesus. And then he goes on in 61 again. I got to get through this. He says, but he held his peace and answered nothing again. The high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the son of the blessed? Do you hear that? Thou art Christ, the son of the blessed. When you know who you are, do you hear that? When you understand what God had called you to be and who ordained you to be who you are, you don't have to say anything to anyone. They're going to figure it out for themselves. Do you hear that? They're going to recognize who you are. So stand up and be what God called you to be in this kingdom. Notice Jesus didn't even say, yes, I am. They said who he was. Do you hear that? Glory to God. Verse 61 again. You got to catch this by the spirit. He said, but he held his peace. Glory to God. I'm not saying nothing to you. I ain't got to prove to you. I ain't got to show you. I ain't got to flatter you. I ain't got to let you, I ain't got to try to coerce you to believe in the same God that I believe in. I ain't got to coerce you to believe that this is a place where the spirit of God dwells. I don't got to flatter you about that. I'm going to hold my peace in the midst of everything that you're saying. Do you hear that? And then he goes on to say, but he held six to one, but he held his peace and answered nothing. He didn't say anything. Sometimes you ain't got to open your mouth and chew back. Glory to God. Do you hear that? You don't have to be a dog. You don't have to bite back. You don't have to be a cat. You don't have to scratch back. Do you hear that? You don't have to be vindictive and try to get back. You ain't got to do anything. Glory to God. Let them look foolish in the mighty name of Jesus. Hold your peace. Do you hear that? Because you're now working out the process from the principles that you said you understood. Do you hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. It's not a bad thing to tell somebody you're not doing what God called you to do. You're not where God called you to be. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to show you my process. And what your process is, I'm moving on. Do you hear that? You just move on. Keep on doing what you know you're supposed to do. Glory to God. And he goes on again. We got to get through this. Amen. This is good to me. Hallelujah. What revelation it is in the scriptures. And he says in 61, but he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, art thou the Christ, the son of the blessed? Woo, you already know it. See, look how I'm looking. Look how I'm holding my peace. Look how I'm standing. Look at my stature. Look at my smile. Look at what my power. Look at my, uh, 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 my, my tenacity to love and to hold and to keep and to handle what God has given unto me. Yes, he is the son of the blessed. Do you see that? You are blessed. Do you know that? Glory to God. And then he goes on to say here, if I'm moving too fast, say slow down. But this is good. 62, he says, and gee, now he's opened up his mouth. All of these things they said, and they already knew who he was. See, sometimes you don't have to say nothing. People know who you are. They just don't want to agree to it. Do you see that? Because they can't humble themselves to agree to it. They always going to think that they're better than you. Some people thought they was better than Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Moses people that led them out of it out of Egypt all of their life. He led them out of Egypt and they still thought they knew more than God. 
They asked the Moses, they said, why? Why? God showed them and he delivered them and he still, they still asked, why did God? Why God? Why did you bring us into this wilderness that we may die? Then they said, we should go back to Egypt. Why would you want to go back to a place of bondage? Why would you want to turn around from a king of king and the Lord of Lord that brought you out? See, it's not just looking at Egypt as the children of Israel. You have to look at your life today. Where were you and where you used to be? We all used to be in some type of bondage. Do you see that? We used to be sick and God healed us. Do you see that? We used to be blind, but now we can see. Do you hear that? We used to be drunk, but now we are sober. Glory to God. Do you hear it? We used to be wanderers, vagabonds, not a place where you can call home, solidified in the church, being stable in your mind, being stable in your heart. You are not looking at what God has brought you from and what God wants to take you to. Why do you want to go back? Because you're not understanding the process. God wanted you to be totally free. That's right, first lady. And that's the process of God. God wants us to be totally free, released from bondage. Bondage is not being incarcerated behind walls. Bondage is in your mind. It's how you think. It's your process. It's your fault. Do you hear it? Bondage can be the same essence of people that you hang around. They're holding you in bondage because you want to be where they are and God wants you to release so you can move forward to bring them along where you're going. Glory to God. Bondage is just not being whipped and lashed. Do you hear that? Bondage is a mental activity of the mindset of the human of humanity. What are you thinking and how are you thinking and who are you surrounding yourself with? Why is it so important that you must do this before you give yourself untotally unto the Lord? Do you hear that? That's bondage. And so they wanted to go back because they said we can get fish. <laughs> we can get cucumber. We can get everything and they was thinking it's free. It was not free for them. Today, you're going back into the world. You're sitting back outside of the house of God and you think it's free. It's not free. It cost them something. It cost them to work like slaves. It cost them sleepless nights. It caused them painless mornings. It caused them to die off before it was time for them to die because their body, their energy was drained because they was uh, abused and working so much. It cost them. But the only thing they can think in their mind is it was free. It was not free. So you think, I don't have to serve Jesus in this kingdom. It's free. No, it costs. See, when you don't understand the principle that it didn't cost you, but it cost someone else, you're going to treat it different. But if you are connected to the kingdom of God and the will of God and the way of God, you know, the cost is very important and you know, the cost is very important. So you're going to what activate and do the process of that, which, you know, the principle that cost Amen. Jesus cost. It cost Jesus his life. And so for us to know that we must operate in the process and show how much we care of his cause. Do you hear it? And so getting back to the text, Jesus in 62, Jesus and Jesus said, look at what he said. I am. Do you see that? I am. Ye shall see the son of man sitting on the right hand. On the right hand of what Jesus power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said. He was upset because Jesus truly told him who he was. See, when you let people know who you who, who you really are. They'll get upset at you and say, who do you think you are? 
How are you going to say that you're anointed and appointed by God? How are you going to say that you are blessed by Jesus Christ, the son of the living God? See, they already know this, but they want you to get caught up in their mess, to tangle with them. Do you hear that? But Jesus said, I am 62. And Jesus said, I am. I am. And ye shall see the son of man sitting on the right hand of the power mm, 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 and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, what indeed, excuse me, what, what need are we any further witness? You have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? See, when you don't know who you are and you're afraid to say what God says, whose you are, the people that don't understand who you are, because you knows who you are, they'll say that you're calling blasphemy. Do you see that? Because they really didn't understand who he was. But Jesus held this peace and now he's showing who he really is because he held his peace because they said who he was. Do you see that? When a person tell you who you are, you don't have to say anything. Just hold your peace. But then it'll be a time when you can open up your mouth and reveal who truly you are. And they're going to say, no, that's blasphemy. You are not that. Glory to God. Look at this. And in the beaker, and they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And 65 say, and some began to spit on him. Do you see that spit on him? Because they didn't want to accept. Who he truly was. See, some people don't want to accept who you truly are. Do you hear it? You are truly blessed by Jesus Christ. You are truly more than a conqueror. You are truly the head and not the tail. You are truly above and not beneath. You are truly a way maker for those that cannot make their own way. Do you hear it? And he says, and some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him, prophesy. And the servant did strike him with the palms of his hand. Now they marking him, covered his face so he couldn't see. And now they're saying, prophesy, who did that? See, mockery now is playing a game. See, people will mock you. They will give mockery on you. They will point fingers at you. But my beloved, if you know who you are, you don't have to say nothing. If you know how you stand, you don't have to retaliate. If you know that you're in the will of God and God is speaking to your heart and commanding you to hold your peace in the midst of the storms of this world, in the midst of the storms of your family, in the midst of the storms of your job, in the midst of the storms of people that's all around you. Hold your peace and say nothing. Because there will be a time when you will have to say something. And when you open up your mouth to say something, they're going to say that's not who you are. But the revelation of a difference before you opened up your mouth, they already told you who you were and they already not recognized who you were. Do you hear it? In the mighty name of Jesus. So Jesus is telling us in this kingdom, in this 3D kingdom process, he tells us these things. He says to us, glory to God, go to Exodus, go to Exodus chapter three. Go to Exodus chapter three, and then we're going to show who Jesus says that he is. And see, we can say who he is because we understand that he is our way maker. Jesus is our way maker. We can't do anything without Jesus power. We must always follow the commandments of the kingdom of God. As I say again, it's not a suggestion. It's the kingdom of God. Amen. Glory to God. Look at what he says, and we'll find out who Jesus says he is. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Jesus is powerful. In this kingdom, 
we must recognize who Jesus is, the king. He operates everything in the kingdom of God. God gave him all authority. And if we're going to follow this kingdom process, and if we're going to look up into the kingdom and reach into the kingdom that we may reach out, we must really understand who the king is. Amen. I'm not the king of my own house. You're not the king of your own self because your own self can't control yourself. Do you hear that? We need a king to lead us. And his name is Jesus Christ. Look at this. He says in verse 14, glory to God. Look at this. He says, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Do you hear that? I am that I am. And he said, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent me unto you. Knowing who Jesus is. Now, let's look at this in the book of John. You don't have to go there in the book of John, chapter 6, 35 and 48 through 51. He says, I am the bread of life. Knowing who Jesus is. These are characterized knowing who Jesus is. Jesus is what? The bread of life. Because he says man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that what? proceed out of the mouth of God. He is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. And Jesus also is the light of this world. He's the bread of life. He's the light of the world. And also Jesus is the doorway. He is the doorway. When you can't get in, Jesus opens up the door to let you in. He is the doorway to things that seems to be impossible because he says nothing's impossible for me. He is the doorway. I can give you scriptures if you want those scriptures to back that up. I am the light comes out of John 8 and 12. I am the doorway, John 10 and 7. I am the good shepherd, that's John 10 and 11. I am the good shepherd. Here's the good shepherd. The good shepherd always lead his sheep to the green pastures. The good shepherd always wants you to go through the straight and narrow. Just think about it, young youth, young children. Your father and your mother are the good shepherds because they want you to go straight in life. They don't want you to hit the wide roads in life. They don't want you to go and be condemned in life. They are the good shepherds because they follow the chief shepherd. Do you hear that? They are the good shepherd because they follow the chief shepherd because they don't want you to go out of the pasture. Out of the pasture is the wide road to destruction for your life. Knowing who Jesus is right now in the early age of your life, knowing who Jesus is right now in the area of your life. If you're old, if you're young, it doesn't matter. We must know who Jesus is in our life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is powerful stuff. This is the kingdom of God. Not only that, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five. 25, I am the resurrected life. I am the resurrection and the life because when your life seems dead, I can resurrect you to bring you back. Glory to God. Do you hear that? Resurrected life. That means that he will never die again. He resurrect your life. He resurrect your problems. He resurrect your pain. Do you see that? He brings it back to juvenation to where it was before and you will never be in that predicament again because he's a what? resurrected life. He changes your life. If you want to stay where you are and do what you do, then you won't recognize him as the resurrected life. You will just live life. Do you hear that? But he is a resurrected life. But see, sometimes you just want life. But he wants to resurrect your life. And the reason why your life ain't going to resurrect or can't be resurrected because you can't submit to the one that says, I am the resurrected life. So your life stays the same. What they call it first lady, an oxymoron, doing the same thing, the same way, the same and getting the same results. You have to take your hand off of certain things and trust the resurrected life. The resurrected life is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And then he goes on in John 4 and 16. He says, I am the way. I'm the way. You're trying to make your own way, but I'm the way. And not only am I the way, I'm the truth. 
Don't make your own way. I'm the way. Don't go their way because that's a lie. You come to me. I'm going to give you the truth. And then he says the third, I am the life. So I'm the way you are to live. I'm the truth that I'm going to show you and watch your life end up. Do you hear that? I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I'm the life. Jesus shows us what well, principles. Then he shows us processes, how we ought to live and the ways that we ought to go. And then lastly in that, he says, I am the true vine. If you connect to me, I am the true vine. That's John 15 and one. I am the true vine. If we're connected to the vine and through the vine, there's nourishment in the vine. Just think about in the natural, you have a vine. You got plants and stuff and, and things in your yard. When the vine, when things are connected to the vine, when they're connected to the vine and they're connected truly to the vine, what comes out of the vine is a stem. And if they're connected to the vine, it begins to grow. See, some people don't grow because they're never connected to the vine. Do you hear that? And then they want to blame Jesus for your connection. No, you're not connected to the vine because you're not growing in your life. You're not growing to be humble. You're not growing to be a servant. You're not growing to see it the way that God sees it. You're not growing to humble and submit yourself to be what God says that you ought to be, what you ought to do and how you ought to do it. You're not connected to the vine. You read the principles about a vine. But being connected to the vine, then you'll start blooming and blossoming. Your life won't be, oh, I'm going to try. No, it's nowhere in the Bible that Jesus said he tried. Jesus never said, I tried to save him. He never tried. He always did. You will never find the word try in scripture. No, you will never find that. And so Jesus tells us these things. He tells us that he is the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrected and the life. I am the way. First lady, I am telling you the truth and I will give you life, life more abundantly. And not only that, if you stay connected to me, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Christ lets us know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And when we establish this thing in the kingdom, we can look unto him for favorable expectations, outcomes of life. Notice Jesus held his peace. He didn't have to say who he was because they said who he was. See, it was revelation behind what they were saying, but they did not want to say it themselves. Do you hear it? People will not want to say who you truly are. They don't want to say it. But by you holding your peace, they have already told you who you are. Do you hear this in the name of Jesus? So let's move on to the second principle this morning. I don't believe we're going to get through it, but this is the second principle, reaching in, reaching in, reaching in to the kingdom of God. And as we reach into the kingdom of God, we can know and see all of us from a natural perspective. Every person, that's everyone, belongs to a nation, either by birth or applying for a citizenship citizenship of another nation we can see this in the natural every one of us from the natural perspective we belong to a nation just as was in the book in the bible they was the nation of israelites and they didn't suppose to what join with any other nations see when the kingdom of god we don't join with other nations do you hear that in the kingdom of God, we have one citizenship, and that's the kingdom of God, being true to God. Do you hear that? In the kingdom of God, we don't have multiple, we don't have multiple identities. 
We don't have multiple citizenships. You can't have multiple citizenships when you're in the kingdom of God, truly in the kingdom of God. So when we enter into this kingdom, the kingdom of God is not democracy. Do you know what democracy is? Democracy is controlling someone. Democracy. Democracy is a world activity. Democracy controls people to manipulate them, to do as they choose, do as they want them to do. But the kingdom of God is not democracy. It's not democracy. The kingdom of God is theocracy. And theocracy is divine nature of God. It's God's divine nature to lead a people to truth. Do you hear it? The kingdom of God is not democracy. It's not one person ruled. It's not ruled to condemn and to control in that type of magnitude. But the theocracy of God is the divine nature to lead people to the truth. It's the divine nature to show the life of God and Jesus Christ in this kingdom. And in this kingdom where the theocracy of God is, is where Jesus Christ is supreme ruler. He's a supreme ruler of our life. Supreme ruler of our life. Now, let me help you out. Let, let's help each other out. When we were growing up in our parents' house, glory to God, and we were young teens, we was under the divine nature and divine rule of our parents. Sometimes it seemed like it was democracy. <laughs> well, you can't do, no, nah, you better do this and you better do that. Now, let's be real with one another. All right, you better get yourself in here. It seemed like it was democracy. It was so controlling and everything. And you can remember in your mind, and in, in, I know you can if you're telling the truth. If you're in the kingdom of God, you got to tell the truth. Because you say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So somebody tell the truth, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. There was a point that you couldn't say, I can't wait to get out of here. Boy, when I get of age, I am out of here. I'm gone. I don't want no more parts of this. Do you hear it? Now, I know you have said that because I have said that myself. Glory to God. And when you got out there, when you got out there, you began to focus back on the theocracy of God, the divine nature of what your parents were trying to tell you and, and get you to believe and to receive. Do you hear that? But now you are living in the world of democracy. All kind of criminal activity. Do you hear it? A world that is showing you the wrong way and not the way of the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So the kingdom of God in its theocracy, Jesus has supreme rule. And if Jesus has supreme rule, Jesus say, I am the way, the truth and the life. If he has supreme rule in the kingdom, there's no way you're going to be taught the wrong way. Do you hear that? Because he has what? Supreme rule. And he has the divine nature and the divine authority given to him by the father in heaven to rule in the kingdom and everything in the kingdom that he rules it has superior, superior authority to lead you to the righteousness of God. Do you hear that? And Jesus Christ, he has the superior rule and authority to let your life be much better. To superior supreme rule that you would never lack or want anything. Superior and supreme rule to make that you are healed, healthy, prosperous, and blessed. Do you hear that? If Jesus has supreme rule, and he is given authority by the father. I say again, it is divine nature that he wants to see you do well. Do you hear that? He wants all that's in his kingdom to do what? To do well. So Jesus invites you and me to the kingdom. And when he invites us into the kingdom, he gives us clear instructions on how we are to leave, how we are to live in this kingdom. And what we are to look at in this kingdom. 
He wants us to recognize things inside of ourselves, to recognize what's inside of you. That's not like the kingdom of God. He's not criticizing you. He's not condemning me. He's not putting me away. But in this kingdom, he wants us to recognize things that are inside of ourselves. And for us to recognize what's inside of ourselves, we have to see it through the eyes of the king. Can you agree with me? Jesus in this kingdom, he is love. Jesus in this kingdom, he is joy. Jesus in this kingdom, he is peace. Jesus in this kingdom, he is hope for the hopeless. He is the father to the fatherless. Do you see that? He is bread to them that cannot eat because he is the bread of life. Jesus in this kingdom is all in all that we need and will ever need because Jesus is supreme authority in this kingdom. In this kingdom also, he wants us to turn away from the wrong things in this world and to turn unto him. In this kingdom also, with Jesus a spring ruler, he wants you and I to understand that God has reconciled ourselves to bring us back unto him, that we can live in joy and peace and harmony with God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son, but most of all joy and unity amongst each other in this kingdom because of the divine nature and the supreme authority that Jesus has been given by the Father. Jesus wants us to confess things. He wants us to confess that we sometime are wrong and that we're not always right. He wants our hearts and our minds to be risen from the cracknets and pits and dark and gloomy and stagnated things of this world. He wants us to be released from our own self, our own sorrows, our own pains, our own defeats. He wants us to stand up and shout with a voice of victory from the throne room of God, knowing that he has saved us and forgive us of all our past life, our all past pains. And he wants us to be released into the newness of life in this divine kingdom that he has supreme authority over. And only if we take a moment and be still and hear the king speak to the innermost being of our soul, then we will hear him loudly and recognize, I don't have to live this way. I don't have to be rebellious. I can live the way that my king wants me to live. I can stand up in this kingdom and say the same thing that my king has decreed. That I am blessed, filled with the wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the heavenly hosts that my king has already decreed. It's the only thing I do I have to declare it. And when I declare it, I must live in that which I declare what my king has already decreed over my life. And so Jesus knows that when we are baptized into his love, baptized into his joy, baptized into his spirit, we can demonstrate how we ought to remove the deadness off of our life. It's like scales falling off of you. It's like every step of the way, heaviness comes off of you. You become light because now you're moving closer to that which gives you peace. You're moving closer to that which gives you joy. You're moving closer to the hope and the promises that he's already decreed over your life. Your life is filled with joy and not pain and sorrow. Release yourself from your own sorrow.
Release yourself from your own pain and walk in the demonstration of you being baptized into the spirit. Submit yourself to the will of God. Offer your body as a living sacrifice that you can live before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Know and receive the gift of God. Know that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you because you are the temple of the living God. If God lives inside of you, speak to that temple. Speak to that temple. Gravitate to the Holy Spirit inside of the temple and know and receive by faith that God has made you glorious. God has made you wondrous. God has shown you how much he loves you and greater is he that is in you than any problems or situations that's in this current world. Living in the kingdom of God. Living the lifestyle in the kingdom of God. There is a lifestyle in the kingdom of God. Some make the kingdom of God lifestyle as it is like a Hollywood movie. That's not the kingdom of God lifestyle. The kingdom of life, God's lifestyle is sometimes grievous. It's hard work. It's hard press. Do you hear that? It's hard work. It's hard press. Why? Because you have the world that's coming up against that, which is always good. So it's always going to try to manipulate you to do that, which is the opposite of God. And God is always good to lead you to truth. It's going to come up against you in the oppositions to get you to look down on yourself and never look up. Do you hear that to the glorious work that God has done in your life? It always will get you to look at what's not happening and you will forget what God has done and that it has happened and it shall happen again, even greater than what he did before. In your life. Do you hear it? So God tells us the kingdom lifestyle. The kingdom lifestyle is a new location and under new ownership. Go to Colossians chapter one. Let's go back to the scripture text. Colossians in the first chapter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a very simple, very simple message. It's nothing complicated about it, but it's the kingdom of God and God's kingdom is not to be confusion. It's to be a simple process. Amen. Can you receive this morning? Can you receive this morning? First, it's in Colossians chapter one. Let's look at the 10th verse. 10th verse. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says right here, if you're there, say I'm there. He says that ye might walk worthy. Do you see that? That ye might walk worthy of the Lord under all pleasing. Knowing that you're walking worthy of the Lord, living the lifestyle of the kingdom of God, knowing that you're walking worthy of the Lord. Not letting the world condemn you and saying that you're not worthy. You're worthy of the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. That ye may walk worthy of the Lord under all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Do you see that? The work that you do for the kingdom of God is fruitful and it's pleasing. It might not be pleasing unto the world, but it's pleasing unto God. And then it says increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing where in the knowledge of God, this is the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. And verse 11 says strengthened with all might. You're strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with, with joyfulness, with joyfulness. And, thir and 12 say giving thanks unto the father which hath made us meet to be partakers in the inhabitants of the saints in light. Do you see that? And then he goes on to continue to tell us in the mighty name of Jesus. He continues to tell us who have delivered us. Do you see that? Who had delivered us? See, the lifestyle in this kingdom is a deliverance. It's a deliverance. Who has delivered us from the power of what? Darkness. Brothers and sisters, we have been delivered. From the power of darkness. 
That's why he tells us in the first verse, he opens up in verse 10, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Because of what? He delivered us from the power of darkness, have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We live in the kingdom of God. We have a new life, a new outlook, a different approach. In the name of Jesus, everyone that don't look to the kingdom of God and want to live the lifestyle of the kingdom, don't be afraid. Don't be bashful if you don't have no neighbor next door. Don't be afraid or don't be bashful if you don't walk with nobody. Nobody's walking with you because the lifestyle they live. Do you hear this? But God says you got to know this lifestyle. You got to know this lifestyle. You must understand this lifestyle. And then he goes in verse 14. And whom we have redemption through the through his blood, even for the forgiveness of sins. He says for the forgiveness of our own sins. Now go over to Matthew 16 and 24. Matthew 16 and 24. Matthew 16 and 24. We almost there. Matthew 16, 24, the kingdom lifestyle. There's a different way that you live in this kingdom. And in this kingdom, we must understand that Jesus has supreme authority. And if we're going to live in this kingdom as he desires for us to live, how many know that Jesus is not a respecter of person? Anyone can live in this kingdom if they choose to obey the king. If you don't choose to obey the king, then king won't let you into the kingdom. Because he says in the word of God, I know it's in scripture. He says, for your mouth, you serve me, but your heart was far from me. Get away from me. Neither do I not know you. Do you hear that? Why is that? Because you didn't operate to the kingdom lifestyle. You said it with your mouth and the mouth is the principles that we can speak principles, but the process, the principle, one plus one is the principle. We understand one and one, but what's the process? You have to add those two together to get the number. And once you get the number, then you have, it's a fact that those principles work. Do you hear it? Glory to God. Are you there in the book? Of Matthew's gospel, the 16th chapter. Matthew's gospel 16. Let's look at the 24th verse. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matthew 16 and 24. Not complicated. Very simplistic. Very understanding. Very humble. Jesus is a humble person. He wants what's best for you and me. He just wants us to follow the kingdom lifestyle. It's so much confusion in the world that we live in today. There's so much unpleasant things that are appeasing to the eyes of many people. And Jesus is trying to get us to see the truth that we can live a lifestyle in this kingdom. And not be condemned by the world. Look at what Jesus is saying in Matthew 16. And I believe this is where we will descend. I do believe. Hallelujah. And he says here in the 24th verse. He says right here. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Listen to this. Living in the kingdom of God. The kingdom lifestyle. Matthew 16 and 24. He says to his disciples. His disciples is those that truly believe what he's saying. He says unto his disciples, if any man will come after me. Not after the world, not after things. Going after Jesus, let him deny himself. If you're going after Jesus, you got to deny yourself. It's going to cost you something. Do you hear it? 
Living the kingdom lifestyle is going to cost you something, but it's not going to cost you to where you would die. It's going to cost you to grow up. It's going to cost you to face the truth. It's going to cost you to leave some things by the wayside and move forward. Look at what Jesus says. He says, if any man will come after me, you're not going after the preacher. You're not going after the apostle. You're not going after the bishop. You're not going. You're going after Jesus. That's who we go for. Living the kingdom lifestyle. Living in the 3D kingdom, we're going after Jesus. Hallelujah. Tacoma, you got to go after Jesus and quit going after your own way. In the name of Jesus, look at what he says again. And Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Follow Jesus. That's the lifestyle. And 25 say, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And so whosoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. So let go your own self. Let go your own self. See, self again, and we said this years ago, self will never leave self the truth because self is selfish. Self never wants to do anything. You take that word and spell it backwards and drop the H, you'll get flesh. And flesh never wants to live the kingdom lifestyle because flesh does not want the spirit to move them. Flesh does not want the spirit to control them. Flesh does not want the spirit to lead them. Do you hear that? That's why I say I am the way. If you want to get in the way, you got to let the spirit lead you and guide you and show you that which is right. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. And then he goes on to say in 26. For what is a man, for what is a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What is he actually saying there? Is he really talking about money, profiting in money? Profiting in money, not just money, profiting in the things of the world. Letting the world dictate your kingdom lifestyle. Letting the world be priority over the kingdom. Do you hear that? What is it a man profit if he shall gain the whole world, that's male and female, and lose his soul? If you let the world dictate to what you need to do before you do it in the kingdom of God, then you can actually lose your soul. How is that? Because the world becomes more important to you than the kingdom lifestyle. The world becomes more important to you than the commandments of God. The world becomes more important to you because it's pleasing to you to be in the world when God says, no, you need to be in my house learning my ways so you can understand my will. So you cannot let the world overpower you and dictate to you when I'm commanding you to do. Do you hear it? And people don't want the commandments of God to tell them what to do. Most people don't want the commandments of God to tell them what to do. For he says, what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his, oh my God. What will you give to in change for your soul? We know people will give and we have seen this in life. They will give up the most precious things that they believe they have in their life. And they can lose their whole soul. Exchanging your soul for filthy lucre. Exchanging your soul for world popularity. Do you hear that? Exchanging your soul just to fit into the crowd, to want to fit in. Where people say, oh, I like you. So you exchange your soul to fit in and you bow down to that of their nature. 
and their lifestyle. And it's not kingdom. It's not the lifestyle of the king of God, kingdom of God. And then he goes further to say. 27 for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father. Look at this. He's coming. He's coming in the glory of his father, not by himself, but with his angels. Do you see that? And then he shall reward every man. Every person that's humanity according to his work. What did you do? I gave you instructions to do it. I gave you the command to be. I gave you the command how to live in this kingdom. I told you I was the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I'm the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the Christ. I am the son of the living God. I am your true savior, not the world. I'm the one who leaves the Holy Spirit and baptize you with fire. I am your source. I am the one that you have faith in. I am the head of the church and I am your king of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus lets us know these things. And he closes here in 28. He says, verily, I say unto you. There be some standing there. He said, there will be some standing there. And the some that standing there knew the principles. They knew what the word of God says. They lift their hands, amen, praise God, they smile, but they never went through the processes of the lifestyle of the kingdom. Or they begin to move into the processes of the lifestyle of the kingdom, but then their own perspective kicks in. And in the perspective that kicks in to say this way is too hard for me. But Jesus says, I am the way I'm the truth and the life. You can't get any farther in life unless you come my way. Jesus said, Right here in the text, if any man will come after me, see, it's not going after the world. You're going after Jesus. And he closes here in the 28th verse, truthfully. This is powerful and it's, it's so profound that it sounds so, so elementary. But look at what he says. First Lady April, he says, look at this. He says, verily, I say unto you, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to nobody else. I'm talking about the lifestyle that you live. Verily, I say unto you, there be some standing here will shall not taste of death. There will be some that won't taste death till they see the Son of Man coming. In his kingdom. Some won't see death. There will be some standing that will not see death. The natural death. They won't see it because they caught up. They won't see natural death. Some won't see natural death. Really I say unto you that but some standing here. We shall not taste of death. Till they see the son of man coming. In his kingdom. Because Jesus said, I'm going to return and I'm going to reward and I'm going to repay. I'm going to reward and I'm going to repay. It will be, yes, it will be people. It will still be people here. Until I come, there'll be people here. Until I come. But he's, the essence of it, he wants our lifestyle to be right. Because it says, no one knows the time of the hour that the Son of Man shall return. No one knows. And so the preparation, not just clinging on to the process, I mean the principle, but understanding the process that we have to live this way. We have to love this way. And these are the principles and these are the processes of the kingdom of God. The last scripture, let's go over to 2 Corinthians 5 and 15 and then we'll close there. 5 and 15 in the lifestyle. 2 Corinthians 5 and 15. 
We'll close right there in 2 Corinthians 5 and 15. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Living in this kingdom. Living the lifestyle in the kingdom of God. You're in a new location and under new ownership. When you live the lifestyle of the kingdom, there's a new location and there's a new owner. Oh, my God. Many people say in their life uh, under new management, they have boards out there and business opportunities under new management. Do you see that? Amen. But when you go in, it's really not under new management. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's just a catch on. But we are the new management and new ownership. Look at this here, sir. He says in 15. In 15. Glory to God. In 15. This is it. No, go to 12. Let's start at 12, please. Let's start at 12. Let's start at 12. He says, for we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasions to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart, which glory in appearance and and not in heart. Do you see that? Glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us. The love of who? Christ constraineth us. Because thus judge that if one died, for all, then we're all dead. He died for everybody. Do you see that? Because we all were dead, that he died, that we may have life. And that's why he says we the, he's the resurrected life. We was dead naturally to the spiritual things of God. And when he died, he rose. And when he rose, those that received him, believed him, and followed him, we become alive in him, in the kingdom. Do you see that? We come alive in the kingdom. And then he says in 15, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Do you see that? We can't live unto ourselves. That's why it's not about us. It's about him. Because of what he did, what he did, that we can have life and understand who he is and how we ought to live in this kingdom. In this kingdom. And 16 says, wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after what? The flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. After the flesh. 17. Therefore, if any man be, that's anyone that accept Jesus Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We live in a new location in this kingdom and we under new ownership, which is the kingdom of God. Can we agree to that this morning? Very simple process in our life. God is not complicated. He says that he died for all, that all may live. Died for everyone that we may live. He wants us to live a life of joy and peace and vibrancy. He wants us to come to truly serve him in the beauty of his holiness. He wants us to live and compel many to come to know him, that they may live with him and be with him and understand this kingdom lifestyle. Living in the 3D kingdom, there is a command. It's not only principles, but there are processes. And in the processes, sometimes it may seem hard. Jesus had to go through a process. And the process he went through, he could have 
gave it up and said, no, I'm not going through that. I understand what you said, Father, through all the processes you told me that I must go. But he went under the commandment of the father. Father commanded him. He had many opportunities to turn away. He had many opportunities to say, I'm not doing that for those people. They don't care nothing about you or nothing about me. I'm not going to die for them. I'm not going down there to be hung on an old rugged cross for no one. I'm not going down there to be whipped with lashes on my back for them. I'm not going down there to be spit upon and ridiculed and ostracized. I'm not doing that. But he died to himself daily. And Jesus picked up his own cross and he followed the father's will. That's the commandment to live in the kingdom of God. It's not a suggestion for you or nor a suggestion for me. And first and I, we read something in, and it's so phenomenal how the children of Israel. God didn't like them complaining and murmuring. They complained about a lot of different things. And we ourselves must squeech and hope on our complaining. <laughs> Amen. We must put an STOP, a stop sign on some complaining that we do. How many know that God already know where you are, what's happening in your life? And I heard Bishop Jake said today, he says that we don't need to pray God. This is where I'm at. God already knows. But what he did say is that we are to invite him into the situation. God already know where you are in life, but we are to invite him into this situation. Do you hear it? It's a big difference. And I say that's powerful. Glory to God. So God be the glory for your patience today and your understanding that we live a kingdom lifestyle. And that we reach into this kingdom that we may understand more that he is the way, the truth and the life. And that he is the good shepherd and that no man lay down his life and no one can take his life except he lay it down. That Jesus is our resurrected life. He's our good shepherd. He's the doorway to life. He is the son of the living God. He is the savior of the world. And my prayer is for you that are listening, looking at home, that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior. This is a time that you must obey the commandments of God. It's not something that God has to pressurize you to do. But once you understand truly that he died for all, that you may live.
in the temple of God. So the Holy Spirit can commune with you. If you're a backslider, come on back. Fall in love with Jesus once again. In the name of Jesus, amen. And if you truly are out there and you have no place to call your own, I mean a house where you can sign, be sealed and delivered, that you could put your gifts to work and the God, God says that your gifts will make room for you. There's much room in this house for your gifts, your talents, singing, dancing, writing, teaching. All of the gifts that God wants in his house so his house can flourish. If that's you, we invite you to be a part of Spoken Word Church here located in Tacoma, Spanaway. There's nothing hidden, nothing broken. But I believe just as the children of Israel, they was afraid to go into the promised land because they seen giants. But God had already promised them what they would have. But some people are afraid to go in to be challenged because they're afraid of the outcome of their life. The outcome will be joyful. The outcome will be fruitful. So let God use you. Don't be afraid to come into this land. Amen. Glory to God. That's flowing with milk and honey. The land of spoken word where your life can be changed and rearranged. Don't be afraid to be used by God. So God be the glory for your life and your family today. May you enjoy this Memorial Day weekend and we salute all the men and women around the world and those that are plowing the field in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And to you, spoken word, I salute you for your authority stance in the word of God and all the people in the house say amen. Amen. To God be the glory. May the peace of God be with you. Amen. Shine his ever loving light upon you. May you go in peace, but most of all, go in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to God be the glory. God bless you this morning. Amen.